hello everyone. Today I have the pleasure of being joined by one of the most credentialed and respected flyweights on the European circuit, a former Cage Warriors champion now set to fight for the Octagon MMA flyweight title. It's Mr. Sam Creasy. How are you today? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's plenty to get into um, with all the news that's suddenly circulated over the past week or, or so. Um, obviously, it was announced by Optagon that Elias Garcia was um, stripped of his title. Aaron Abbey would be fighting for the vacant title. And shortly after, uh, Optagon come out and say, it's you that, that's fighting Aaron. Uh, that's how we saw it. But from mm. your perspective, uh, how did things sort of play out behind the scenes? Um, this was a fight that I was kind of interested in back when Octagon spoke about coming to the UK initially, I saw Elias, uh, was going to be fighting. I can't remember if he was matched up with Aaron straight away, but that, that was a fight I was definitely interested in at the time. Then the way it ended kind of looked like that wasn't going to be happening for me for a while. So, um, I carried on kind of waiting things out, just trying to be patient, see what props up for myself. Um, and then, you know, Aaron's been waiting for an opponent for a while and I chopped my hat into the, uh, I sorry, yeah, chopped my hat into the ring. <laughs> I was just uh, ever hopeful and, um, you know, it's come to fruition Then uh, we're going to fight for that title. 100%. Um, again, from, uh, I suppose, my perspective, Cage Warriors has been one of the, like top tier promotions in Europe, yeah. I suppose, like alongside uh, KSW and whatnot. But over the past couple of years, it really feels like there's been a like a shift in the axes with Octagon entering the um, entering like the complete European market because obviously they had their more sort of niche focus initially. Um, what what's what's it been like from your perspective as a fighter um, seeing them enter um, the entire European MMA market? It's interesting. Um, I, I've known about them for quite a while. I think I was offered a fight for them a few years back, but it was very late notice in and around Christmas time and I was in no shape. Um, but I, I became aware of them then, saw all the kind of crowds that they were getting, you know, at that point um, and I've watched their expansion really in the last year or so. They, they've just really uh kind of come onto the scene to this side of Europe a lot more and um you know it, it it's it's a healthy healthy thing for the UK market for, for Europe in general to have some of these big promotions um cage warriors are obviously massive been a stalwart been here for a long time um but you know competition is good um and that can create some uh potential fights in the future as well possibly uh, between promotions, perhaps. Um, but, you know, MMA is growing as a sport. There are so many new guys coming through. And, um, you know, the bigger promotions, if they stick around, is only going to be uh, very helpful for the sport. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, with that being said, then, um, obviously, you're sort of taking this fight on somewhat short notice. Um, mm -hmm. But regardless of the outcome, do you see Octagon now as... Uh, you know, your home for the foreseeable future going on past this fight? We shall see. But, um, you know, I'm hoping I can create a relationship with them. And, um, you know, I've had a great relationship with Cage Warriors. But, you know, maybe it's time to move on and um, create a new, uh, a new fan following for myself on Octagon. Experience a little bit more of Europe take that belt home and um we'll see uh we'll see what happens april 20th for sure uh yeah that kind of leads me on to another question i want to ask then you are going to be introducing yourself uh to a whole new fan base they have such a sort of uh strong base in central europe mm -hmm. um with that being said to these um all these new fans that are, are gonna be watching you potentially for the first time uh, if you have to pick out one fight from your career for um, you know these new viewers to go watch that sort of encapsulates Sam Creasy as a fighter, uh, which one would would you tell them to go and watch? 
that's difficult. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one one that my, my coach my coach has always kind of go back to is the the Andy Young fight. Um, they said I was kind of seemed like I was in a in a different place, uh, on a different wavelength when I was in there, and everything was so so kind of fluid. Uh, with my movement and my strikes, my combinations, um, so that that would be that be one to go and watch if if you wanted to kind of check out what I'm trying to achieve in most of my fights is that kind of blend of um, elusiveness with uh, with that little killer instinct as well. Sure. I mean, another fight they could go see is um, the first fight of Aaron, right? Um, yeah, it, that's a great fight. A really nice um, showing of of the complete mixed martial arts, I think. Mm. Um, now, with that being said, obviously, yeah, you came out with the win in the first um, showing. Uh, you know, every mixed martial artist will say that how much you can grow over over the space of three or four years. Um, mm -hmm. With that in mind, how much stock do you sort of put in that previous win with over Aaron um, going into the the rematch? Um, honestly, like we've done it once, right? In my mind, we've, we've had that experience, but he was, that was his first fight back in, I, I don't, I don't know how long, but you know, I don't imagine that's Aaron at his, you know, his top performance, if you like. And, uh, I'm expecting him to come and, um, show me who the real Aaron Abbey is. Um, and uh, I, I would, I would say the same about myself at the time. Like that, that was an okay performance from me. I won that fight, um, but I didn't really get to display the kind of skills that I'm capable of, and my coach is not capable of. So you know, it we've fought, <laughs> we've had that experience, but I think it's going to be a completely different fight. Okay, um, I you. Probably won't remember this, but we actually spoke uh, in an interview after the uh, the Aaron fight, and I remember speaking to you about um, uh, game plans that you had going into that one. Mm -hmm. And you essentially said, "I had no game plan. It was mm -hmm. to go in there and and to impose your skills in the best way that you know that felt best in that moment." Mm -hmm. um, three years later, is that still your mentality that you take to these sort of fights? To yeah. Pretty much. Um, I, I, I tend not to have a game plan um, because if it fails, people then kind of come unstuck. Um, I am, my biggest skill is I'm well-rounded. Yeah, I'm average at everything, but <laughs> I'm very good at putting the whole package together. Um, and, and that's where I believe I'm world-class. I don't think anybody else can do it in the same way and has the comfort levels that I do in every area um so game plans kind of i mean if you've seen any of my fights game plans very much go out the window <laughs> quite quickly anyway um it can change you know just just how i'm feeling in there at the time if i feel good on the feet i'm gonna stay on the feet if he brings a little bit too much on the feet or i don't feel comfortable i can't find my rhythm or whatever then i'm probably going to try and take it to the deck but we shall see um and yeah, game plans don't really come into it for me. I'm I'm just I'm playing it by feel. Gotcha. Um, uh, then I also wanted to just touch on your your past two fights. So throughout the you know the the pandemic era, um, you you remained pretty active throughout fighting yeah. in um silent venues or venues with low capacity crowds and whatnot. And then suddenly you've come back and you've gone to Rome. Twice, you know, the, the, the birthplace of gladiatorial combat um, against two Italians and, um, and and got those two wins. What were those experiences like, you know, competing in Rome against the Romans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that, they, they were really good experiences because I've been fighting, obviously, in the UK so much in, in the past however many years now. Um it felt like almost I was in my backyard the whole time. Um, and it was nice to go out there into, uh, you know, enemy territory um, because that's what I used to do as an amateur. That's, 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 that's what I used to do when, when I was starting my career. And I like the odds stacked against me. Um, the Italian crowd is fantastic. 
they were a lot more uh, hospitable than I kind of assumed they would be. Um, obviously, they support their guy and um, they support him with everything they've got. But then once the fight's done, I got congratulated and so much love from from fans of of both of my opponents and including my opponents. Um, so it's a really, really beautiful experience for me. Um, obviously, I've got some luck fighting out in Rome now. So uh, if Octagon decide to uh, <laughs> do a show in Italy, I'll, I'll, I'll be available for that as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was just a different experience for me again. Mm. Yeah, that would be something. I mean, the way Octagon are going, you wouldn't be surprised if they ended up there yeah. and, and who, who knows where else. Um, they're really on a roll right now. Okay, um, one final question from me then. Um, I just wanted to touch on uh, your brother, Tom Creasy, right? Um, currently set to fight uh, Amir Malikpour, um, real tough fighter. Um mm -hmm. Uh, guy I'm sort of familiar with when I used to work with IMAF and whatnot, you know, credentialed amateur and pro record. Um, I think from for family, it, it, it seems like a nightmare having, uh, you know, a relative competing in the octagon, the, the stress and the what might happen, uh, you know, the whole build up. Um, you know, you, you see some people won't even go to events or won't even turn on the TV to watch them. Um, now, obviously, you're someone who's who's been in the octagon. You've lived the life of a mixed martial artist. And what what is it like for you having a a, a brother, no less, um, competing? You know, now in you know, in Europe, in, at the top of the sport, really. Um, it's a blessing, uh, and it's also you know, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> <laughs> it's exhilarating. But also, there's there's so much anxiety, obviously, because he's my brother, one. Mm. But I, I care for all of the guys that I'm going to go and corner ever, and he, even to train with. But it's, it just adds that added extra bit of, you know, oh, please don't let anything bad happen to him. I mean, it's stupid. It makes no sense. He is quite capable. <laughs> he's a fantastic athlete. And anybody will tell you who's trained with him, just how bloody good he is but it doesn't ever change me being his big brother and worrying about him in there um then again i've got the best training partner <laughs> because we're together you know we, we've been together for the whole of his last camp this camp sorry that he's just done um and that's left me in a good position having not signed this aaron fight until last minute to to go into it in a in a in a good healthy state so um you know like I said, it's a blessing. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose there's not really a huge amount of top tier flyweights in 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 England and Britain and Europe, even. So yeah, literally having a brother who is is yeah. um you know yeah right there, I imagine it, it really is a blessing just for preparation. Um, right, that's all I've um I've got for you today, Sam. Um, really appreciate you coming on to uh to preview this this fight, which is I'm sure is going to be absolutely brilliant. Um, if you want the last word, um, you know, if people know where to go find <laughs> tickets or uh, any shout outs, anything like that, uh, feel free to take it away. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Uh, just a shout out to all of my sponsors and that, my appreciation for your support throughout, all of my training partners, uh, and everybody, please tune in. Octagon, April 20th, you're going to see me take home the title. Film. Brilliant. Thank you once again, Sam. Thanks, mate.